I have it on good authority that it's the most caustic cleaner around. Thanks, I'll give it a try. Wow, this stuff's so grunchous. I'll have it sparkling in no time. Grunchous? Yeah, corrosive whilst at the same time disconcertingly sweet. Good word, thanks. He's busy cleaning. Can you help me out with some local words? Well, so you can help Egon Ronnie over there slag off our pies? No chance. Bye then. Turnip puffs. Staff only. I'm not allowed in there. Doing? What does it look like? Filing your nails? Not funny. I'm trying to get this bloody graffiti off the front of his shop. At least it's only a short name. Oh, this is just the tip of the filth bag. Some little scrotes broke in through my storeroom window and scribbled all over my walls. It's going to take me hours to get it all off. Cool. Can I go in and take a look? Whatever, just don't nick anything. I've left Dirty Harry in charge. I'll just leave you to it. <laughs> Oi, who said you could go in there? Your boss said it was okay. Fair enough, I believe you. Really? You're quite the Inquisition. Things must be starving. Wow, they made short work of that. Curly has a face like a crumply swan anus. Judging by what the pub landlord said about Curly's face, I guess crumply must mean thick and leathery. I love a good local adjective. I must remember to tell Woody about it. No. I don't think it's drinkable. I think I have a new word for you. Great, let's hear it. Napcock. Apparently it means something weak and tasteless. Ooh, great, that describes the sauce perfectly. Crumplish. I think it means thick and leathery, and also possibly like a swan's anus. Oh, good work. That'll describe the texture perfectly. I must remember to never eat here. Grunctious. It means corrosive yet disconcertingly sweet. That is exactly the feeling I have in my mouth right now. Nice. Right. Let's get this published to the blog. Done. Okay, what do you need to know? 
Can you tell me about the Fig Brothers case now? Oh, sure. It all started ten years ago. It was my first week on the force when we got an anonymous tip-off about the body. <clears throat> we brought the victim's brother in for questioning, but had to let him go due to a lack of evidence. That night, he skipped town. And when we searched the hall, he'd hidden an antique sword with his fingerprints on the hilt and Fergus's blood on the blade. Then there were the DNA traces found at the scene. It was pretty compelling, I suppose, and the chief was convinced that he'd done it. What do you think? This was something the chief and I argued over. Something just didn't add up. When we interviewed him, he seemed in complete shock and apparently gave us another lead. But his interview cassette went missing, and the chief was convinced of his guilt. That's all irrelevant now, anyway. They dispose of old case files after 10 years, so any possible leads will be gone too. Is there any way I could get hold of one of those case files? I could do with getting to the bottom of this. Actually, I think they're running an auction at the Village Fate today. They're probably selling some old kitten evidence. You never know. You might get lucky. Great, thank you. What can you tell me about the police, Chief? Uh, he moved away recently after splitting up with his wife. He asked me, it was his obsession with this case that pushed them apart. She's still around. I saw her walk past carrying a box of his old things a few weeks ago. No idea where he is now. Could be on the other side of the world. Where could I find the case files again? There's an auction. Bye. Bye. How did the toilet cleaning go? Oh, pink gruncher stuff worked like a charm, thanks. Please, can I have a go? Go for it. It's free now, anyway. How come it's free? We were charging a pound a go, but some old dear wanted a turn and dropped her purse in the mud. Then the cash all fell out of her purse. Then she slipped and fell on top of the cash. Then the mallet slipped and fell on top of her. I stopped charging in case she tried to sue us or something. The vicar's looking after her now, although I'm not sure who's looking after him. What money did she drop? No idea. The tits came and picked up most of it. Anything else will be under all this mud. If you see her, tell her not to sue me, alright? Can I have a go at Goosey Wallet? Sure. Do you want me to explain the rules to you? Yeah, go on then. One, touch the goose to make it spin. Two, throw your mallet and try to hit it on the head. If you wait until it's spinning too slowly, your throw won't count. If you manage three wallops in a row, you get a prize. But budgets were cut this year, so it's only one prize per customer. Do you want me to repeat the rules? Nah, I'm a seasoned goose walloper. Fair enough. Let's wallop. That's all your spins for this go. How did you do? I didn't manage a single wallop. Hey, I thought you said you were good at this. Fancy another go? No, I'm all walloped out for now. Fair enough. It works better on... It might work better on grass. No outdoor event... It works better on soft ground. It might work better on grass. It works better on... I don't think I'm going to find anything right here. Ooh, I 
just found a pound. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Bye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Right. Is everybody ready for the auction to begin? I said, is everybody ready for the auction to begin? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. First up is this fine semi-automatic rifle behind me. What am I bid? Ten pounds to start. Do I see ten at the back of the room? Five. Do I hear five? Three then. Do I have three? Back in the room for two pounds. Ugh. One pound it is. I have a pound. Is that a bid from the young lady who presumably has a gun license at the front? Um, no. I guess not. Fine. I'll just put it down as unsold, like everything else today. Right. Last item. A large box containing all the evidence from the Fergus Fig murder investigation. <sighs> Shall we just dispense with the theatre this time? What have you got? One pound. <sighs> I suppose it'll buy me a Twax bar at the shop. Going, going, gone. Sold to the young girl with the already bulging rucksack at the front for one pound. Yay! To say that today has been grossly unprofitable would be an understatement. <sighs> I'm going on a break. That'll be one pound, please. Thank you. Don't, you know, touch the guns and stuff, all right? Wouldn't dream of it. Not a girl. Right, let's have a rummage in that box. There's loads of stuff in here, all bagged up. It's information that I'm after, though. Ah, here's the case file. Let's take a look inside. It looks like some of the pages are missing. It doesn't even tell me the date of the murder. It has the details of two crucial pieces of evidence though. The DNA sample found at the scene and the sword with blood on the blade and fingerprints on the handle. I agree, it's pretty compelling. But something tells me there's more to it. It mentions Horatio's interview recorded on the night of the murder. Shame the interview cassette's not here too. I bet that would shed some more light on the case. I wonder if I can discover what happened to it. Apparently, the DNA sample was hair retrieved from the fist of the victim. It looks like Fergus yanked a clump of it off his attacker. The DNA match to Horatio was 89%, with a 99.9% .9 likelihood that it belonged to a close blood relative or sibling. So it was definitely a close family member. I wonder if there's anyone else who fits the bill. I'll ask around. Apparently, the DNA sample was hair retrieved from the fist of the victim. It looks like Fergus yanked a clump the DNA with a knife. So it was... I wonder if... I'll ask... There's nothing else in there worth having. Here are the two pieces of... Shave me into... I bet that would... I wonder if... I According to the coroner's report, the murder weapon was a sharp blade exactly like the one found hidden at Fig Hall. It appears that Horatio had attempted to hide it up the chimney. There's a photo of the scene and you can even see the dried blood on the blade. Forensic analysis confirmed Horatio's fingerprints on the hilt and that the blood was 100% match for his brother Fergus. This photo reminds me of one I've seen somewhere before. According to the, the murder, 
It appears there's a f forensic and that the blood was this photo. According to the mur it appears there's a f forensic and that this photo. According to the murder, it appears there's a f forensic and that the this f according the murder, it appears there's a fo forensic and that the this fo Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Enjoying your twacks? It's okay. I'm sure they used to be bigger. What can you tell me about Horatio's interview? Well, that was a long time ago, love. It was recorded on the night of the murder. When was that exactly? Look, I don't mean any offence, but could you just drop it? Leave the detecting to the detectorists. There's no need to lose any sleep over it. That's precisely my problem. I just know there's more to it than the case file suggests. What was the exact date of the murder? This case is closed. What if I could prove that the original evidence isn't strong enough to support the case? Then you'd tell me? There's something about this case. Brings out the obsessive nature in people. Something tells me there's more to it. I can't explain why. <sighs> Whatever. In the unlikely event you can cast serious doubt on both pieces of evidence in the case file, I'll throw all caution to the wind and tell you, like it'll make any difference. What evidence would you need me to debunk? Both of them. The DNA and the murder weapon. What was it you said about the police, Chief? I didn't, but seeing as you asked. You couldn't talk about the fig case around him, he'd flip his lid. Oh, and he was obsessed with a weekly local radio show which played chart music. He used to record the episodes onto a cassette each week. Right after the fig murder, he was too busy to buy any cassettes and ran out. He went scouring the whole town for one. His home, the shops, even police station. I think he found one in the end, but we all gave him a pretty wide berth after that. Including his wife. She left him and gave all his stuff away to charity. Bye. See ya. A veritable treasure. The chart show. It's crammed with cassettes, all dated individually. The lady bought them in a few weeks ago. Apparently her ex-husband used to record music off a local radio show every week for years. Never paid for music in his life. She tried to give us his hi-fi too, but the pause button was completely worn out. So I've been listening to them on my Talkman instead. No prizes for guessing who these belong to. Hmm. The police chief was looking for a cassette to record onto the day after Horatio's interview. But the exact date doesn't appear in the case file at all. I reckon the police officer from the auction probably knows it. I'll take a look. Oi, don't touch anything. I was only looking. That may well be the case, but I can't watch the shop and fill in this competition at the same time. So in the meantime, just keep your wandering fingers to yourself. You could just put it down while there's a customer in the shop. Oh, so you're planning to buy something now, are you? Er. Uh... Just leave everything alone until I'm done. It smells like dust. A forest and a lake. I guess this is somewhere on the grounds. I suppose I might as well take a look. According to the plaque, this photo is almost 40 years old. Hang on a minute. There's the sword in the chimney, complete with the same dried blood spatter. If this photo is really 40 years old, what's it doing there 30 years before he even hid it? Unless it was actually hidden there decades before. And isn't the murder weapon at all? At least, not for this murder anyway. 
I wonder why someone hid a sword up there in the first place. I should go and tell the police officer about this. It looks like there used to be a family tree hanging on the wall 40 years ago. It's too small to make out on the photograph though. I wonder if anyone knows what happened to the original. I wonder if anyone would notice if I took this. Yep. Plus, I have an alarm switch right under the counter. And how would the receptionist does a mean pile driver. You can pick up a promotional pack for members at reception. I think there are some postcards in there. Thanks. Do you have a set of postcards for members? Oh, yes. And not only that, I'll even throw in a free branded tote bag containing promotional literature from our specially selected third party partners. Joy. I know, right? Here you go. Thanks. Here, let me take that visitor pass too. I recognize you anyway. It's got some postcards and promotional junk in it. I'll take them out. The Joy of Crabs. Crabbing is an inspired pastime enjoyed for generations. Make the most of your trip to the seaside by luring crabs into a bucket with rashes of juicy, full-flavoured prime bat bacon. Create succulent memories with your family this summer. Created by the Guild of Bacon Marketeers. Did Horatio Fig have any other close family? Oh, it's possible. Apart from Fergus, they were a pretty secretive bunch. There could have been an old herd of them living here for all we know. There was a family tree hanging on that back wall when the Heritage Trust first took over. Oh, but that was stolen at the same time as one of the antique vases. <laughs> no prizes for guessing who was on duty that day. Marjorie? Marjorie. I never even took a copy of it, so unless someone finds it, we'll never know. Where's the family tree now? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. It was stolen around the same time as that priceless vase went walkabouts. The photo in the other room shows a sword stuck up the chimney. Doesn't surprise me. There was all sorts of stuff here when the trust took over. Most of it had been here for decades. Covered in dust and cobwebs. I don't think Horatio did a scrap of dusting while he was living here. What happened to the other vase? It was stolen while Marjorie was on duty. Oh yeah, the curly whirly eater. Quite. It's probably found its way into the house of a wealthy collector by now. Oh, come again soon. It's good to see your continuing interest in local history. Okay, let's see what this one does for me. I'll just dip my pyjamas on. Ah, this is more like it. I love the seaside. That makes one of us. Looks like the tide's out. 